God. Yes. I'm not going to leave the meeting. The recording? Is, I think we've all we've all gotten sick of this Zoom message. The recording is in progress. The recording is in progress, everybody. I'm so excited to introduce to you one of my personal friends, uh, Roger Wilkerson. He's also a business consultant. Um, I'm not going to waste your time with trying to like boost his ego. Perhaps he can do that himself. So, well, I would like to talk to you about how important I am. <laughs> I know, like I, I mean, it's really tough. It's always tough to talk about yourself, but yes, I'm a business consultant. I am one of the few people who have MBA finance and comedy writer on their CV. I've worked in both of those things. I've done sales, I've done marketing, I've done all kinds of stuff. So I, I come at business consulting. The name of my company is Why Get Arts. That's strategy backwards. We try to look at everything differently. And if anybody has a follow-up question about anything in this video, just send me an email, roger at whygetarts.com and, and mention this and you get one-on-one -on -one time. Don't worry about it because any friend of yours is a friend of mine. Awesome. Now, I don't want to like beat around the bush. Sure. Um, you know, a lot of the people in the audience are startups, you know, they're looking for ways. Well, to first of all, my condolences. <laughs> my condolences to all the people in the audience that are startups. God bless you. <laughs> I hope you're about 12 years old or 16 years old or 20. I certainly hope you're not in your 30s or your 40s, uh, but welcome to hell. Welcome to startup hell. Yes, yeah, exactly, exactly. And um, you know, there's a lot of things, you know, people make these different mistakes in terms of their like finance. Sure. Um, whether it's they get funding, they burn cash or they don't raise enough. What have you seen to be some of the biggest mistakes or challenges that people need to look out for um, going on this adventure? Well, it's a great question, right? Because, you know, it takes money and all that stuff. But I'd say the number one problem that we see with a lot of people is they go after money and they don't need to be going after money. Yeah. I mean, that's really it. That's the core problem, which is remember when you're going after money, I'll be taking some water breaks during this. Um, when you're when you're going after money, what are you really go? What are you going after, right? You know, like it, it's like okay, I want I want a hundred million dollars to do this. I want ten million dollars to do this. It's no different than I want five dollars to get a burrito, people. Um, what are you doing with the money, and why do you need that much money? And who cares, right? Um, so, if what what's really happening when you're going for money? is you're giving up power. You're giving up ownership of your company. That's what you're buying. And people are betting on you. This is what most venture capitalists will not tell you. They are betting on you to fail. So they are looking at, okay, this, is gonna, this isn't gonna work. Uh, what piece of this puzzle will I be able to get my money out, right? Because sophisticated investors know it takes seven, six, seven, eight years, right? to earn their money back. Also it depends on what stage you're at. Is it an angel investor? Is it a, so the, the real question is why are you even asking for money? And the biggest mistake most people have is, like, well, I need it to do this. Well, do you have customers? Yeah. Because if you don't have customers, what the hell are we talking about? And if you have customers, then it becomes, do I really need additional money? The best position to be in is to fund your company through business and not need to give up any of the action people. And I think so many people miss that because I think people think of it as like Santa Claus or they want to go public or any of that stuff, which is great. That's fine. It's good. But it also comes with issues, right? Yeah. And challenges. It's not, you know, it's not all great. So the real question is why the hell are you trying to raise money? And then if you get past that, then it's like, okay, well, if I give you this money, when am I getting that back? Yeah. And how am I getting that back? And oh, by the way, how much more money are you going to give me? Because you wouldn't be able to do anything without my money. It's a leverage game, right? In the beginning, right? The people with the money have more leverage. So that's really the issue is that why am I trying to get money? Yeah, you know, you bring up this uh, really, 
I, th I think it would be like the North Star for any company going forward is that they need to have customers. Um, yeah. And, you know, I see it all the time. I've been working with immersive technology companies and startups since for about five years now. It blows my mind when I talk to a company about like doing marketing and then I'm like, okay, well, how much did you get paid? Because I always say, how much did you get paid for this product? How much did you get paid for this service? A lot of people are doing their, their like proof of concept for free with these major companies. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's what we call in business consulting, stupid. <laughs> we have a technical term for it. It's called don't be stupid. Uh, <laughs> why are you working for free? Uh, yeah, no, people that work for free end up having a problem. Yeah. You can't eat for free. So when you have, one of the biggest mistakes people make is not separating their business finances and their personal finances. Mm -hmm. If you have enough money to live for 18 months, which is what it takes for a startup to usually survive, if you have money in the bank to survive for 18 months and you can take care of your family and your kids or your responsibilities, and it doesn't matter if you don't make a penny, then you're good to go. Right. Most people aren't in that situation because most people are gambling and that's why most people are trying to get money. I mean, what people say, I want you to invest in this. I go, why would I do that? I never, you just didn't even get to know me. Why would I invest in that? And why would I refer you to anybody? You're not even doing any work, right? So mo that's, a, I'd say, the biggest mistake. And then the other thing, too, is that you don't get good at business. Here's, here's the funny thing. You don't get good at business if you have money. Mm -hmm. Money, having money makes you lazy. Uh, there was uh, some great research on what businesses work and what businesses don't. And everybody for a long time thought it was money. It's not money. It's timing. If the timing of your business is right, it will work. If the timing of your business is not right, it will not work. It's got nothing to do with you or your product or your service or whatever. Mm -hmm. Got it. I really, I, I 100% agree with you. Uh, and maybe I'm going to flip this back onto you. Sure. Uh, do you think the timing is right? from somebody that's not like in immersive technology, um, mm -hmm. but you know a little bit about it from maybe from me talking a little bit. Well, everybody's, everybody's in immersive technology, whether they realize it or not. Ah, I love that answer. I mean, it's really the truth, right? Yeah. It's just, they're not living in that world. They're not putting, I mean, look, as I've told you, I'm not into it because I have, I have figured out how to get through my panic attacks in the real world. <laughs> I have no desire to have to learn how to get through my panic attacks with a, a head a headset on. I, you know, I just, it's not, it, now that said, I will probably get into it at some point in time, but you know, I work with clients who are in it. Yeah. You know. Do you think that we may be at a, at a time where it may be right? Or do you feel like, this may be another like hype train. So it's a tough one, right? Everything is a hype train until it's not a hype train. Yeah. <laughs> right? So yeah, you know, look, remember early adapters are early adapters, mm -hmm. right? So for me, um, early adapters don't mean anything. For some people, early adapters mean stuff, right? So my thesis is always, well, look, I'm interested when the early adapters are ban abandoned ship. When people that have no business starting to like a product or a service, when they're starting to talk about it, that's when the magic really starts to happen, in my opinion. That, right? That's true. Um, and part of that is because I did watch what happened with Apple from the beginning and all that stuff. And, you know, I was an early adapter. So, you know, and I left it and came back and, you know, I, I get it. But remember, early adapters want to be the cool kid at the party yes like that knows the new thing right and that that's why you've got to get to know me but at a certain point in time at a certain age you don't wait in line to get into the club anymore <laughs> yeah 
you know what I mean? Like at a certain age, you just say, you, you, you figure, why am I waiting in this line to get into a club to spend a lot of money to not go home with the person I want to go home with? Why am I doing that? That's called your 20s, right? And so, you know, that's really, again, that goes back to why are you trying to get into the club of venture capital people? You may not even like these people. You know, um, they're not there to help you. They're there to make money. Yes. That's what, the, and that's what they're good at doing, right? So that's their only priority is, you know, that's it. Otherwise they'd just be on the corner handing out cash to people. <laughs> hey, here's a hundred million for you. Here's 20 for you. On that note, let's go, let's like dive into some of these, you know, like programs, so a, a big part of immersive technology, technologies that will not be adopted so quickly into the right. mass consumers. Um, a lot of governments are thinking about, you know, offering grant funding programs. Mm -hmm. um, for example, um, here in Singapore, we have the 5G grant where right. you get 30% reimbursed after the prototype launches. And then you have to, then there's a commercialization phase where you have to get the second client right. or third client or fourth client to actually prove that it is a, a model that can be replicated. And right. then you get the rest of the funding. Now, to me, that kind of, like to a lot of people, it does seem like these are people just like, flashing out cash, passing it out. However, both you and I know that is that isn't the case. There always needs to be some upfront capital coming into that. So yeah, look, the thing is, is that, you know, you want to get money however you can get money, right? And then you want to make sure that you're returning value on that money. And you want to make sure that the value that you're returning on that money to the investor is greater than if they just let it sit in a bank or in a mutual fund or in a, you know, some really safe, you know, in a, in a really super safe thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's really, you know, that's all the investors looking at, you know, I, if I, because if I get, it's an opportunity cost. If I give you X amount of dollars, I can't give those dollars to somebody else. That's my opportunity cost. Right. Right. Governments are the same. Right except governments are a little trickier because they, and again, this is another one of those things where you have to say, should I go for this, right? Because what are the strings attached, right? Yeah. How much control does a government grant want from what you're doing? How much credit does it want, right? Um, so you want, really want to look at that and you want to say, is this a smart business thing? So. Well, yeah. yeah. You know, like most really great businesses are built off of a combination of raising money from customers and friends and family. You know, and that's it, right? Yeah. And, and those are people that they believe in you. They want to give you money. They want to get you started. They want to give you support. And those people really don't care if they lose their money. And those are great investors. And that's a lot of angel investors are like that, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of philanthropic investors are like that. So if you know, if you are a high risk thing, those are the people you want to be, you know, that you want to be dealing with. If you have a viable, commercial, successful thing, prove that first with real money from real clients. Yeah. Then, in the conversation with investors, you have leverage, and you may not have to give up. Uh, you know. A substantial percentage of your company. Yeah. Remember, somebody doesn't have to get somebody doesn't have to own a hundred percent of your company to own a hundred percent of the company. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody explain would explain that. Explain that a little bit more. It all depends on what your voting rights are. Uh, you know, uh, you know, you, maybe I give you cash, but I got sixty percent voting rights. Mm, yeah. well, then I'm running the company, whether you want me to or not. Right. Got it. So, you know, that's that's how that happens. 
Cool. Well, let's kind of uh, maybe like talk a little bit more about, you, know, you kind of put in little bits, bits and pieces here, but if you could share with everybody that's watching right now, just a, a really simple approach, a framework um, for going, or dealing with finances? Dealing with finances, um, even if maybe you don't have any, or maybe you have a little bit, what well, look, would that be? You know, you want to keep, too many people complicate finance, right? You want to keep it simple. It's money in and money out and money saved, right? The, you, if, you, if you have enough money to operate for three months, then make sure all of your business decisions are based on things that can be done within that period. Mm, okay. Too many people try to do things beyond their resources. So um, work with the resources you got and make things happen with those resources because that's what builds up the confidence, right? So, you know, there are times when you can turn $10 into $10,000. That's fun, right? And you can do it with 10,000 into 100,000 and 100,000 into a million. So that's really kind of the key is be mindful that keep it simple money in money out and money saved and at a certain point if you can fund your company for two or three years that's when you start to say okay well let's look at taking some of that money and putting it into corporate investments right and that's where you start to make that shift when you get more sophisticated but in the beginning you're not there yet it's just do i have enough money to feed all the people that need to be fed? Do I have enough money to pay the bills that need to be paid? And if not, then that's the problem I got to solve. I've got to solve that problem. You know, and I've got to deal with that reality. And it, I can't deal with it as a business owner. I can't deal with it with a, well, in the future, right? I will be paid in this. And, you know, it's like, well, we're not in the future. We're here today. Can you get a burrito? <laughs> I, I can't buy a burrito that. for somebody you're in trouble <laughs> i love it so i think that that is a a fantastic way to uh, close this and if anybody wants to reach out to you uh to learn how to like manage their finances or put in a, a nice roadmap for themselves where can they reach out to you roger the easiest way is email roger r-o-g-e-r at whygetarts.com. I answer every email. Awesome. I, I'm also on all social media platforms, always playing around doing different things. So I'm, I'm, I'm reachable. Or they can talk to you and, you know, you'll get, you'll get them. Too. Great. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for letting me be a part of it. It's great. Bye.